All right, here we go. Turn this down real quick. All right, how's that? Let's see how the mic's doing. How's the camera doing? Get that out of the frame a little bit. All right, here we go, guys. Thanks for stopping by episode uh, episode four. This is actually the second episode on YouTube. Before that, I streamed on Twitch. I think one of those recorded. If you ever want to go back and check that out. But uh, yeah, we switched over to YouTube because it is more, I don't want to say user-friendly, but it's definitely more familiar for people. So YouTube it is. And um, yeah, so every Thursday night, guys, we're going to be editing a variety of different styles of types of photos. But tonight, as you can see by the title, we are editing underwater night dive photos. So this is the first time that I've ever taken photos at night underwater. And uh, hang on real sick, quick. All right, make sure everything is working here. Uh, yeah, so first time ever doing underwater night dive photos. And let me show you this little rig that I threw together because when you're underwater, there's not a lot of light to begin with, but at night there's uh, even less. So I strapped this uh, loom cube to the front of my um, camera housing here and it actually worked pretty good, I think. Um, we tried using like just like the flashlights and um, it was too direct of a beam. It was too much light. It was too hot right on the subject that we were shooting. So you kind of had to like use it, like diffuse it a little bit by aiming it to the side to take a photo. But the loom cube worked pretty well. I think um, we learned some things with the lighting situation. And obviously there's like underwater photo lights, but they're fortune. Um, but I think I could do get by with the loom cubes. I think I might need like two or even three of them. And they have diffusers that you can purchase to clip on there. So I would, I would maybe try that. Hey, Kale, how you doing, buddy? Long time no see. Um, thanks for stopping by. And also, Michelle, thanks for subscribing. I saw that came across while I was loading in. So um, I think the loom cubes work well. I think it could use a little bit more light other than just the one. But uh, we're going to go through some of those photos right now. But really quick little backstory before we get into it. I have some other photos here in case, in case all of these photos are terrible which could be, I actually have not gone through them. Usually I uh, pick out the photos that I want to edit before I go live, but I thought we could do that together. We'll have that little process of, you know, flipping through some photos. Hang on here. I will drink a lot of water, I'm sorry. Um, because I think it would, I don't know, I thought it'd be fun and be a surprise. Um, I actually have kind of reformatted the way that I'm going to do my YouTube channel. I was streaming Mondays and Thursdays. I think what I'm probably going to do now is stream one night a week. And then the other day I will devote to trying to put out, produce some, some form of video, whether that is in like an instructional video or a more condensed version than the live stream, because, you know, live stream could be an hour, hour and change. And not everybody has the time to view that, so maybe making a condensed version, going over very specific points, and then highlighting those on stream. That way, I don't have to, every single stream, cover the exact same topics that we did the week before. I don't know if that made sense. Anyway, <laughs> thank you. I see you. Anyway, um, so I thought we'd go through these together. Typically when I'm going through photos for the very first time, I am going like one by one and I give them a rating, right? I rate each photo either one or zero, right? That's how I start. And for example, when you're shooting like bursts for the, this stingray that uh, it's the very first photo I took underwater, this one right here. Um, by the way, the stingrays were everywhere. If you've never gone diving at night, the life is just, it's crazy everything is out running around and there's way more bait in the water and uh, all the little critters on the reef come out so it's definitely a unique experience but it's also when the first time you do it it's a little eerie obviously the only thing you can see is what's in your beam of light but um what i usually do is i thanks <laughs> i'm getting constructive criticism via uh, facebook messenger live on stream I'll work on that. Appreciate it. So he's saying he wants to see more of my face. Um, yeah, I can do that later. Work on that next stream. 
But anyway, I, I go through these one by one and I like to give them a rating either a one or a zero. And then once I've gone through all of them, I go just to the ones that I rated and then I narrow it down even more. Uh, we're not going to do that whole process. It usually takes, um, you know, 30, 45 minutes, depending on the number of photos I took. And I actually didn't take that many, surprisingly. Um, let's see, 16, 29 to 18, 85. What is that? Like 250 photos. That's actually, that's not a lot. But we were only in the water for about an hour, hour and a half because it was high tide and you have a limited amount of time that you have decent visibility. And you'll see in some of these photos, the visibility wasn't that great. But um, so let's kind of flip through these. Like I said, the stingrays were, were out. You can see in these very first few photos, I think I had the ISO pumped up a little too much and it was a little grainy. So I actually slowed the shutter speed down a touch. I think I was shooting at, let's see here. Uh, I was shooting at 1 400th of a second here. I actually slow it down later. So ISO 3200, I ended up cutting that in half to remove some of that grain and I slowed the shutter speed down a little bit and um, that seemed in camera it looked like it was doing pretty well so the stingrays were out in force this was a, um, a little eel I don't know all the names of the species right scuba divers are professionals when it comes to that what's going on Stuart thanks for stopping by <laughs> I'm Alberto. What's up, Andres? What's up? And um, I don't know all the names. The scuba divers know like what species this is and what you know gender it is. But he didn't want to come out. Obviously, the uh, he was out further than I. I never seen rays in this. Not rays. I've never seen eels in this location before. Um, but I saw quite a few tonight that were out sticking their face up. Oh, there we go. We get a little light on. This photo is actually interesting because you got this little shrimp guy. He's not in focus, kind of in focus, hanging out there. Let's go ahead and give that a one. We might come back and check that out. There's a whole series of them. Shooting pretty pretty rapid here. But like all these fish, like I've never seen this little red guy, like can't see in there, but so many cool looking things out in the dark. Here we go with some more rays. I think this is either called a yellow ray or a, I don't know. Not even gonna try to pretend like I know. That's unique. That's you got this like big angelfish looking thing. Frame. We'll go ahead and give that a one. Hey Colleen, thanks for coming by. Kid. Their 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 patterns are just amazing. And the detail wasn't bad considering like right here, I had the ISO ISO. I think I'm still at 3200 here. No, I dropped it down. So you can see I went down to 1600 ISO, brought that shutter speed, slowed it down. Probably gonna have some motion blur in some of these photos because that's a little slow for the fast moving creatures. But um, you know, with the light that I had, I was trying to improvise to not have that ISO up too high. We'll see what type of focus, what kind of sharpness I have in some of these photos. Thing was pretty cool. I've seen starfish here a lot, so I didn't spend a whole lot of time taking this picture. I probably, I don't know, I just took it just to take it. Dialing in the settings on the camera. Again, first time ever. What type of camera are you shooting? So I'm using the Sony a7 III, and the lens, where's my camera? Here it is. It actually has like the zoom gear and everything on it right now, so it looks a little wonky. But uh, this is the 12 to 24, the Sony 1224 F4. Sony a7 III, and I have it in a Nauticam housing that I just showed you guys. And, uh, all right, moving on. Here's Amber. She was the, uh, she actually took the camera for some of these photos too, but you can see, like, it's pitch black dark. The only thing that you can see is what is in your spotlight. And um, at first it's a little eerie, but it definitely it gets uh, exciting when you see all the little critters and creatures crawling around. That almost rhymed, I think. But what else do we have? More rays? Ooh, that's kind of eerie how he's just coming in from the dark. Focus missed his eye. Like, here I think. Might not have enough light to get that really good, fast autofocus. That's why I think you can see how I have like the one, I'm using my hands. You can see how I have like that one spotlight from the loom cube. Now it's diffused pretty good. 
you'll notice on some of the photos where we're shining this, the flashlight, how uh, bright that was and how hot that was. But I think if you had like two or three loom cubes with like diffusers, I'm talking like you're on like the budget light setup because they have like the, you know, $4,000 lights and things like that. I was trying to get right in front of them. I'm like facing me. I wasn't having it. I didn't want to like Steve or win it too soon. This could be cool if I could um, just angle that a little bit more so that he I look like I'm right on top of him. I'm going to give that a one star rating so we can come back. This puffer fish was really cool. He, um, he was hamming it up for the camera. And I think you'll see here in just a second. There's Dante. And he's got his, you can see his flashlight in his hand right here. He's taking photos of it. And I actually would shine my light on it. See how hot that is? Like that direct light from a flashlight. There's just no way you're going to get a decent photo like that. So he ended up shining the light sort of away from it. And um, looked a lot better. And I saw some of the photos in his camera that he got. Uh, we have a special little treat at the end here that he got that looked really, really good. So excited about that. Can't wait to see what he comes up with. Uh, he's actually using a Canon versus a Sony. He was on Sony and switched. And it's always funny to compare the color profiles and the different things. This is funny. Look at that detail. Wow. That little guy. This is the first time I've gone through these photos, guys. So if I take a second, I apologize. That's pretty. Look at the fins kind of waving there. That's neat. You can see a little bit of that motion blur as I am shooting a little slower. Details. Pretty good for such a low light situation. Uh, I'm still using yet ISO 1600. I didn't want to use auto ISO, which is usually what I do underwater because I don't like fussing with it. But I knew that putting on an auto ISO, um, it was going to just get really blown out. So or not blown out, but the ISO would have been cranked up super high and almost unusable. Definitely want to pull one of these guys to edit. Oh, he's kind of turning towards me here. Might be dark under the chin. Let's go with the wavy, the wavy thin one. This one. Give that a one star. We're not going to edit all these tonight, but I'm just wanted to kind of go through the process that I usually do. You can see here, I think Amber or Dante is shining that light down on them, and it's just a little hot, a little hot. But this is what we do. You know, we learn new things. Trial by error. Trying to keep up. So this is a photo that Amber took. I remember when she took the camera for this. This is a creepy looking little fish. Check this out. He looks like a... He looks like a Sesame Street character. <laughs> what is this fish? If anybody knows what that is, let me know. That's pretty cool. I think you could do a, a, a creative crop on that, bring it in, do something like a, a like a Google Thirds action there. Let's see how close she gets. God, he looks creepy. Right in the dark, he looks creepy. I'm gonna I'm gonna save one of a couple of these maybe. You know, she loves when I photos. Like head on. Look at that. Looks like he's smiling. All right, moving on. I did just snag this photo for the thumbnail, if you guys saw that. So I did come in and just grab that, but I, I haven't looked through any of the other photos. Uh, this was like a little sea snake thing that was crawling around. Again, I'm not a marine biologist. I don't know the names of all these species, but he was pretty cool looking. I was afraid to get like too close to him because I don't know like if these things are bite you if they're poisonous or not but uh, actually I think this photo Amber took but he was just crawling around he was like just moving around on the on the uh, rocks there in the shells this was actually underneath the bridge um, fishing above us which was a little annoying but what are you gonna do they're allowed to be there too all right how many more photos do I have just to flip through another little ray shot 
Hopefully this is cool. He's coming head on. That. Yeah. I don't think the focus hit there. Nice shot, Amber. Yeah. She's she's really killing it with the camera lately. She's a natural behind it. She's got a great eye. Ooh, here we go. That hit. You know, for the lighting, the ISO. That hit. I'm gonna go ahead and mark that one. I like that one maybe better. One or two. Let's mark both of them. We'll come back to it. Interesting. Trying to move through this pretty quick, but I did want to go through the process. Like I said, most streams I have the photos pre-selected. There's a lot that goes into it. This is some type of, you know, a rock style fish. I don't know the act actual species, but he blended in really good. Um, but again, probably do some like creative crop with that. It looks pretty good. Little crab jobby. All right, let's go ahead and go to the end here. So at the very end of the night, we're leaving. So the whole mission of this dive, of course, we, we just wanted to explore and see new things. But uh, number two, <laughs> okay. Um, we wanted to explore and see new things, but I want to see an octopus. I've never seen an octopus um, underwater before, and I dive all the time. And uh, I know that they're at this place, this location that we went to, but I've never seen one. And we dove there probably five or six times during the day, but I know that at night they're a little bit more active. So we we're looking for an octopus and we we're almost done with the night. The visibility was starting to get worse because the tide was going out and right when we were about to get out of the water. Hiding down in this little pile of shells. This isn't a great photo of it, but you can see Eye right here. Got better shots than that. The shot that I came for, that one doesn't look very good. It's really camouflaged. It's actually in focus. It's pretty good there. So you can see here, Dante's coming in with the light. Way too hot with the direct light on them. Still in focus though. During the lack of light. Ooh. Oh, that's nice. Look at him just wrapped around this little rock. There's like a little hole under here and he just crawled out of it. Go ahead and give that a one. We might we might come back and edit that one. White balance difference there. That one's good. Kind of like stretching out his arm there. Dante, tampering with the wildlife. You can see him kind of running away from Dante's big hand here. Look how small he is. That's a great scale, though. Look at the size of his hand. And then how small. There's a little tiny octopus. I don't know how he spotted it. That's a, that's a pretty cool little picture of him. And I know that Amber took the camera because she wanted her own photo. That might be what this is here. Ooh. That might not be in focus. No, nope, because I did have it on spot focus. So the metering was right in the middle. So unless you had the octopus right in the center frame, it probably wasn't going to focus situation. Unless you moved that spot. Yeah, these are all out of focus. Alright, so now what I do is go over here to um, rated in a scale of less than one slide them all the way right to these ones that I just did and now I have uh, the selection of those uh, the 250 photos that I took it's narrowed down now to uh, maybe like 12 photos so we're not going to edit all these we're going to pick my favorites again I've never edited nighttime underwater photos I've edited nighttime above water photos but 
Um, so here's the first stingray with the angelfish. Then we have uh, the looking down. I think I'll probably toy with that in Photoshop on my own time. We're going to skip that guy. I like him. I don't know if I love him. You can see some of the particles in the water here just from us diving down on it a couple times and it silting up the bottom. This little guy is funny. I think Amber will, I'll, I'll do a quick edit on that for her. We'll change that to a two. It said number two here. So we'll go with this guy. We'll edit him. Rockfish, don't worry about it. All right, so we have what? Three octopi photos. Which one do I want to mess with? That probably has the best detail. Definitely the most contrast between the octopus in the background. I like this one though too. Okay, I'm gonna go with this first one here. I'll probably edit both eventually, but tonight we'll do that. All right, so rated two or higher now. So now we have these three photos and let's go ahead and start with, let's start with the octopus. We're, gonna, we're just gonna kick things off right now. And the very first thing that I always do when I'm editing a photo, and I know I've gone over this in every stream, but um, I just start by going down to the lens correction. Where are we here? Lens correction, and I just turn off, uh, re remove chromatic aberrations, enable the lens profile correction, and it has here uh, the Sony FE1224. That's the lens that I'm using, F4. This photo was shot at one one thousandth of a second. So I cranked up that shutter speed, hoping to freeze the movement. And uh, but the ISO pumped it up a little bit. So we're gonna have to remove some of that focal length, 22 millimeters. So I was almost racked out on the lens. Um, not too much lens distortion though. So the photo, you can't really tell if there's lens distortion because it's so dark on the outside. But anyway, so lens correction is done. And now we're gonna go ahead and crop it and figure out what we wanna do in terms of cropping. And I usually like to start um, you know, unless it's something that just screams out um, landscape, I like to go with like the four by five Instagram crop. That's usually like my go-to starting point. If we just center him or maybe down a little bit. Oh, maybe you could go. There's just not a whole lot of interesting stuff going on the outside. So I think you gotta go in pretty tight. One issue. The one issue with the a7 III versus like the A7R3 is that it does have a 24 megapixel um, sensor. So cropping down, you don't quite have that same level of pixels as like the A7R3, which I think is like 50 megapixels or something like that. So you can crop and not lose a whole lot of um, resolution. But in this case, we're gonna crop him down out here enter and this is our starting point so let's go ahead and adjust the white balance i don't think we have to adjust it too much because we just had so much white light on it um but i do want to warm it up a little bit we're going to slide that temperature slider over to the right just a little bit and i think i'm going to pull the tint down eh? no let's try let's see what they want to do on automatic okay i'm not hate that let's bring the up just a little bit that green there we go before after a little bit warmer brings out some of the colors on the octopus i uh, will just start with this and see how it goes so uh, i'm going to bring the exposure up just a little bit about like a third of a stop there and go ahead and smash those highlights down bring out some of the detail on the highlights bring the shadows up now we can bring back some of that light by increasing the white values. I don't want that shell to be white, so this shell back here. In fact, I might go back with like an adjustment brush and it's kind of distracting. Either remove it or darken it. And then the blacks will bring the blacks down just a little bit. It was shot at night and it was very dark already, but I want to bring some contrast out to the skin of this octopus. So that's looking pretty good. You can already see the before and after a little bit more contrast, a little bit more drama. It brought a lot, a lot of yellows though, and I think that's a little too much. So maybe we'll bring this temperature down a bit. And then 
maybe later in the HSL sliders we can adjust it a little bit. All right, moving on to presence. I don't think I'm going to add any more texture, even though there's a ton. What would happen if I boost this up? Done. I think I'll get that in sharpness and the clarity. I'm going to leave. <clears throat> I'm going to leave the clarity alone also, but I won't be going to dehaze it just a touch because it's underwater, and there is stuff in between the lens and the uh, optical view. Bring the vibrance up just a hair. Bring the saturation down so it's only pulling those primary colors. Go ahead and add a little bit of contrast here without going too overboard. I might lift a little bit. Drop the white a bit. Bring those mid tones, mid -tones down just a little. I like dark. I like dark and eerie. It's kind of my style. This might be too dark. We're getting a little clipping down here on the bottom. Right here. That's okay. We can even crop some of that out. You can actually grab the blacks here. And you can just slide the whole thing over in the histogram. How's that? Before, this is the original shot, raw photo, and after. I know you like it dark. <laughs> Don't reveal me, Judah. Don't reveal me. All right, so with the HSLs, um, I do want to bring some of the green and yellow out of this. So you can actually go down into like the saturation. You can go into the green and yellow and you can lower these values. The other thing you can do, especially if it's like a, a mixed botch of colors. Let's go ahead and reset these by double clicking. You can hit your little a, uh, adjustment saturation point tool right here. If you click on that and just find that color that you kind of want to dull down. If you click and drag down, you can see on the right hand side there those, those sliders moving. I'm going to bring the greens down a little bit more than what they did there. And like in that, I might want to bring some aquas and blues in that sand up top. But yeah. is this the greatest photo of an octopus ever? No, it's my first photo of an octopus ever. Um, could it be a little bit, oop, didn't mean to do that. Could it be a little better focus? Sure. I think we have a lot of things to do in terms of lighting for the next time that we go. But, uh, and I don't like, you know, of the most amazing scenery in the background. It'd been great if he was like on a bottle, like a little beer bottle. Not that I condone littering, but like, or um, on a reef or something. Like that would be really cool. Uh, I'm not gonna mess with the split toning, even though there's an opportunity for it here because there's so many highlights at the top and, and shadows on the bottom. We'll get into that probably in a future episode, but I am gonna sharpen this up a little bit. Bring it up to about 60, but we're going to mask this off. Hold the Alt key, slide the masking tool. Want to mask about 80. So you can see the detail. If I just turn that detail tab off, you can see this before and after a little sharper around the eye. <laughs> you might not be able to see it if you're watching this like on a cell phone or something like that, but on this screen, I can definitely see it. Let's go ahead and bring him up. Bigger. Yeah, it looks nice. At least I think so. Very subjective art form. I'm going to go ahead and bring the luminance slider up just because I want to bring some of that noise out without losing detail. Usually I won't go above 30 on noise reduction, um, but we're just going to go to 10 here because I don't want to lose any of the detail in the skin. And about 50 color noise reduction. The color noise reduction is automatically at 20, at least for me, with Lightroom. Um, sometimes I pull that up if there's like um, a lot of blue and purple um, like around his eye here, I noticed that. So if we bring the color noise reduction all the way down, you, you can see. I have to zoom in a little bit further, I think. So we're too low. Look around the eye. Bring that color noise reduction up see that change in the blues and the purples. That does. Get that back to the screen. And I'm liking where this is going for my first octopus ever. I think it's a little dark still, so we might go back now and bring the exposure, the overall exposure up maybe to about a half stop. So that's 0.5. It's a 
now you can see before, after. Exposure is about the same actually after I did the corrections with the shadows. And I would probably crop him in a little bit closer. I'm not going to spend a whole lot more time on him because, again, it's not a masterpiece by any stretch of the imagination. But crop him in a little bit more. Put that eye. There we go. Bring him down a little bit. Yeah, that's okay. Back a little vignette on there. <laughs> Give it more of that under underwater nighttime look. Bring the focus into the middle. That's okay. We'll go ahead and give that a three. So, I'm colorblind. What setting should I use? That's a really good question, Judah. And um, that'd be a good question to ask Dante. I know that uh, Dante, I don't know that he's colorblind, but I know that he has some deficiencies with his color, uh, the way he interprets color. And he uses the histogram a lot and specifically looking at individual colors when he's editing. Um, or if you are colorblind, you can always just, you know, be a black and white photographer. Um, but but I, I don't, it's not a good answer for you, but I'm going to look into that be interesting to find out just to know because I think everybody probably interprets color a little differently right the way that my eye sees color might be different than somebody else's whether they're colorblind or not what if like you know my blue in my eye is actually like red in somebody else who knows? sounds like I got a case of the Dante I'm surprised he's not in here right now blowing up the chat he's usually in he's usually in here so but I would ask him. So there's your before photo and the after edit. Not bad, but I was just excited to see one. I've always wanted to see an octopus underwater, so that's that. Moving on. All right. Let's go ahead and edit this guy because I think this is a photo, Judah, that we could do in black and white, and it might be interesting. So... First and foremost, lens correction, we're going to go down and move chromatic aberrations, and we are going to enable the profile correction so that we get that nice flat profile. <clears throat> I am choking on something, and I don't know what it is. You got to love live. I was joking how long it takes me to make like a one-hour YouTube video if I was to like do it and edit it. Um, cause I'd take like the, I'd say the same line, like 15 times and get it wrong every time. Live it one shot. This is me. So, um, <clears throat> we're going to go black and white on this. I just think I love black and white photography. I think it adds a whole new element. I love drama. I love contrast and that's what, uh, black and white photography allows or at least it leads to. Um, let's go ahead and crop this guy. And I think I might leave this landscape because he is flat. So we're going to leave this landscape as shot, which is 4x3, 3x2. 2x3. You can actually do like a little creative crop here. Pull a, a little rule of thirds on us. Rule of thirds just means putting your subject on one of these cross uh, crossbars here. If you divide the photo in thirds this way and vertically, putting your subject on that line. Artsy fartsy stuff. Generally, if I'm going to do a photo that is rule of thirds, using the rule of thirds, I want my subject moving in the direction of the open negative space. In this case, since he is moving slightly from left to right, I want to have the open space on the right-hand side. I could also probably center this guy, and it would look cool, but in this case, get artsy-fartsy on it. Let's slam him down here in the bottom left-hand corner. Hit Enter, and let's start our edit. I'm going to get rid of some of this black up here by going into Photoshop and dragging some of this sand up, too. But we'll do that later. Let's go ahead and... You can actually get some differences in black and white photography when you adjust the uh, white balance. So you can see if I add more um, yellow and make a, a warmer photo, it actually make it a little brighter. Or if I made it uh, more blue, that pulls out some of the colors on that are more blue. 
but we're just going to leave that as shot. I'm not going to mess with the white balance now. I'm going to bring the exposure up just a little bit because I know when I start messing with the highlight shadows, it's going to get darker. My style. Nine people watching. The best ever. I'm nervous. Thank you guys for stopping by. I really appreciate the support. Um, if you just tuned in right now, this was my first ever underwater night dive session. So we didn't have the greatest lighting equipment, but we made do with what we had. Um, what I'm trying to do with this channel is learn personally and improve as a photographer. At the same time, if I can rub off any information that helps you guys, that's great. Never hesitate to throw some uh, constructive criticism in the comments. I read it. I take free beer next week. I don't know what that means, but I'm down. And we need to dive again, brother. I got some good photos of you, too, with Cobia. But um, I'm just hoping that this is a platform that I can learn and grow. I can share my stories, my experience, and also for the people who are into photography and want to improve as a photographer and editor, maybe you'll get something out of this as well. If you're just in here to see some cool photos, thanks for stopping by. Free beer next week. Do I need to bring the free Do I have to provide that? I don't know what's going on with that. I'm going to get off of it. We're also going to take this photo right here. We're going to rotate it a little bit so that he's a little bit more horizontal, I think. Let's see if that looks. No, I don't like that. Rotating it the other way? That's definitely not the idea. That looks good. All right. So let's go ahead and bring the highlights down, get a little bit more detail in that. Just a little bit. I definitely want contrast. Bring the shadows up. Oh, you got to bring them up. No shadows, it's just blacks and whites. <laughs> Pull the whites up. We're going to hold that Alt key and see when we start getting white clippings. And then we'll let that go. You can always just hit sh um, Alt and double click on the title. And Lightroom will automatically do it how it suggests. Alt or Shift? Oh, it's Shift. Sorry. That's why nothing happened. And you can always adjust from there. I think Lightroom tends to overexpose. Maybe it's just because I always underexpose. I don't know. Leave the texture where it is. We're going to bring the clarity up a little bit so we pull out some of those spots on our little friend here. I believe this is a yellow thing ray or a yellow ray. I'm sure some scuba diver will. Not going to hear me. I'm sure somebody will chime in telling me what it actually is. Dehaze this. What happens if we bring the dehaze up like so? A lot of the shadows. Let's just bring it up a little bit. And already you can see, well, before and after from color. I can actually go back into the history of the edit and just go to when we did it. Black and white. So that was before. Go to the drop. And then now. So just with the little bit of edits in the tone. Little difference, a little rotation in there. All right. Let's go ahead and get into our tone curve here. We're definitely going to want to add some contrast. We're going to pull the shadows and the uh, darks down. Highlights up. This is a typical pattern that you're going to see on tone curves. It's like a little inverted S shape. Um, sometimes I like, stylistically, I like to pull the blacks up and give that black and white photo more of a vintage style look. It's Something that appeals to my eye doesn't necessarily mean it's what everyone else likes. But if you go look at my photos, especially my black and white photos, I tend to do this a lot. And I like it. All right. Um, also, if you guys are interested in photography and you want to see more of my photos, uh, GuruShots.com. It's a worldwide free, semi-free. There's in-app purchases. Um, free photo competition, and they have all different types of challenges, weekly challenges. Um, some of them are going to be like black and white photography, underwater photography, things that start with S. We can use Stingray. I don't know if we can use things that start with yellow or things that start with Y and call it the yellow Stingray. But um, it's a pretty cool program. So go check it out, guruShots.com, and you can look me up, Tommy Allure, and uh, see some of my photos. So where are we going with the Stingray here? We got the contrast worked in. Uh, we're going to sharpen them up a little bit. Again, mask that off so we're not sharpening the, uh, the grain in the photo also, like up here. We can go in with the spot removal tool and pick that up later. All right, we're all 
right? All right, I think the highlights are a little hot. I'm gonna bring the highlights down a little bit. And when I mean hot, I just mean bright. They're a little too white for me. So I'm gonna bring those highlights down just a touch. On at the door. Be cool. All right, so let's go to our spot removal tool here, and we're gonna just zoom in on some of this, these little dots up here. And in fact, if you click your visualize spot tool, in this case, we're gonna have to bring that power down. You can see the little dots that you wanna get rid of and you can spend a lot of time. Dots. Especially underwater photography when you have grain and you have like sediment in the water. Um, there's definitely some photos that I've removed a ton of this, but the spot removal tool is just sampling an area of color nearby. Placing it so that you don't see those little dots. And then you hit done. You can even go in here with the spot removal tool and just turn that visual spot off so you can actually see like if there's specific things that you want to get rid of or not see that might be distracting. You get pretty big with it depending on the amount of detail around it. Like this rock right here I don't really like because it's, I don't know, big and bulky and whatnot. So click that, poof, gone. This spot right here, see ya. On the sides, a lot of the times you'll get um, you'll get that lens distortion. We'll like stretch it out, and they'll look like little um, like little lines, little sticks. So pay attention to that if you're doing that kind of stuff. But that looks better before, after. I think it's on back ray. Interesting. Let's Google it. Ron back ray. Uh, that thing looks like more like diamond shape. See if it's a yellow. That's not it either. Yeah. This is what they're pulling up for yellow stingray. That looks, I don't know, same thing. Maybe this has like more of a pointed nose also. I don't know. This one looks pretty similar. Get rid of that. I'd love to know. I'd love to know more about these little guys. So um, that looks pretty good. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and throw a radio filter around this thing right here. Stuff off. This radio filter is going to affect either um, the stuff on the outside that you see in red there, or if you invert it, click the invert button and it'll now just affect what's inside the circle. And in this case, we are going to do what's inside the circle because I want to um, add a little clarity and sharpen up the ray so he really pops. And then we're gonna do the opposite. We'll add another uh, radio filter and we'll reduce the textures and clarity on the outside. And you're gonna s hopefully uh, notice a difference here. I like doing this uh, stylistically again. It's just a, a thorn, thorn back. Oh, okay. what I say thrown back? <laughs> I actually think I typed thrown back in. <laughs> I'll look that out. I'll check that out later. Thanks for um, looking into that. So let's go ahead here. We're gonna bring the clarity up a little, little bit. Clarity, don't go crazy with it. Little, little bits. But we're also gonna bring the sharpness up. Same, about ten. Ten and ten. That looks good. We might overall just bring the exposure on him up just a touch. Him, her, he, she. I don't want to get into that. All right, good. Hit done. Go ahead and grab another radio filter. We're going to make it a little bit bigger. And we are actually going to make sure that it is only affecting around the outside where I might bring that feather down a little so that it's not bleeding onto our ray at all. We don't want the ray to be affected by this at all. We want to keep him nice and sharp. All right, so now we're gonna turn this off so we can see what we're doing. We're gonna bring the textures down a lot. Bring the clarity down a little. And you can already see now that this is much softer on the outsides and not as much detail. Drawing your eye towards the subject, which is the thorn back yellow beaver ray. That's what it is. Look it up. All right. That looks pretty good. I was going to go into Photoshop here and get rid of this little black corner up here. 
but show you a faster way. Drop. Hmm. Done. That's a lazy way. Actually, no, I kind of like the little bit more negative space here. So let's go ahead and do it really quick. You're going to hit photo, edit in Adobe Photoshop. Don't be lazy, Tommy, especially on stream. People are watching. Six people. So we're going to go ahead here, hit control J to duplicate that layer. We're working on the top layer here. Go ahead and zoom in just a little bit. Not that much. Fit it on screen. We're going to grab our lasso tool. Do a little lasso around that area that we want to omit. Come up here to edit, content aware fill. But we're not using this jobby stuff down here. And then, poof. I think. Did it go away? Before? After. Yeah, so see? Not as uh, harsh. If we zoom in here, you can definitely see the difference. I don't know what it was before. But uh, there's definitely a hard black line, dark spot here. And now when we turn it on, a little smoother. You don't notice it as much. Nice. Go ahead and hit X. It'll automatically, well, you have to hit save. Uh, and it'll automatically bring it back over here into Lightroom. Give it a second and we're done. So uh, let's go ahead and set that. This was the before shot. This is the shot right out of camera. Four people. Thanks. I'm losing them. Please don't keep typing how many people are watching. It's going to get to one real quick. <laughs> I move a lot faster than this when I'm not talking, by the way. And uh, and this was our after. So before, after. You like black and white? I think it's cool. If you don't, sorry. All right. So those are the two photos that we're going to do from that dive. We had the, the um, octopus here. I got about 15 minutes left, and there's a photo... We went to the springs last weekend and I wanted to edit this. I wanted to do it on stream. Love black and white. Hey, uh, I'm actually doing one of your photos. Yeah, I'm about to edit one of your photos. So uh, you can come in. And Amber's here. Amber is the actually one from the, uh, the springs trip. I took the photo. Oops. This one. I wanted to edit this um, for CJ. Um, so I got this cool Neuritic logo going on here. He's the owner of Neuritic. But I thought this was like a really cool photo. Diving down. Um, this is at Blue Springs up in Orlando. Diving down in this cave. This actually goes down like 70, 80 feet. And um, they have this really neat, eerie tree laying over the hole. But as you can see, it was quite, quite crowded. There's a lot of people here. Okay, nine. Amber, I had nine people a minute ago. That's Judah wanted me to tell you that. Um, but there's a lot of people around here, so we're going to get rid of some of them, and we're going to crop this in and clean this up. So the, the sun rays is really what did it for me. I thought it looked really cool. Sorry, I'm talking with my announcer voice, and you're right next to me. <laughs> but uh, let's go ahead and go down here really quick. And I'm going to move a little faster since we've already covered what all of these things are in the past. But lens correction, check, check, done. Coming up here, and we're going to adjust the white balance. Let's see what it wants to do automatically that give it more of that orange and tealy look yeah, that's that brings out a little bit more detail let's go with that um, exposure wise I think it's pretty good bring it up a little bit and bring those highlights down and we should get a nice exposed photo Contrast in there. Looking better already. Photoshop those noobs out. We will. We're gonna we're gonna do it. Get them. All right. So clarity. We're gonna leave that about the same. Dehaze it just enough that we can still see those rays really good. Vibrance. I'm gonna pull that up a little bit. I usually always tend to bring the vibrance up and the saturation down. Um. I don't know why. I just like it. That's looking better. A lot of uh, sediment in the water. We're going to do like a crash, a quick crash course spot removal. HDR, oh, they doesn't want me to, it's asking me to 
HDR that shit and be done. You can say you can say that word here. HDR it and be done. <laughs> I guess. Different strokes for different folks. Yeah. Sharpen her up a bit. Mask that off. Nice. Cool. Other noise reduction, bring the noise reduction up a little bit because the ISO is pretty high. No, ISO is not that. What is it? ISO 800. Okay, that's not bad considering we we're diving in a cave. All right. Okay. Boom. Spot removal tool. Let's get rid of some of this grain just a little bit. We're going to zoom in one to one. Ooh, there's so much. I'm going to have to come back later and do this. Get a couple of them just for the idea. So many dots. I would literally spend 15 minutes getting rid of every single one of these. Oh, terrible. All right, that's enough. Moving on. You want me to get rid of the divers? That's what we're going to do. We're getting somewhere. All right, let's go ahead and go to photo, edit in, bring them into Photoshop. Did I click it? Yep, there we go. Uh, controller command J, make a duplicate layer so we can just work on that. We're gonna come in here and draw around this guy. Lasso tool, you can also use the pen tool if you wanna be exact, but there's not a whole lot of detail over here that needs to be preserved. Align him. Sorry, buddy. You're ruining the shot. Edit. Content aware. Fill. See what Lightroom decides looks okay. Actually didn't do too bad. I'm going to zoom in and make sure. Yeah, that looks okay. Didn't do much there. Okay. He's gone. And then I think we had one other guy creeping in my shot. This guy down here. Zoom in, same thing, lasso him up. Wrangle this tiger. Really quick. Boom, edit. Let the computer software figure out how to be a better photographer. Just like that. Gone. And that is how you get people out of photo real quick. Go ahead and hit X, save that boy. Bring her back over into Lightroom. Never used that tool. That's actually new, a newer to Photoshop. Before you had to go in and just do content aware fill. Now they have, um, it's more advanced. They let you select what you want to pull from. Um, I know that Peter McKinnon did a video on it. If you YouTube search Peter McKinnon and type in how to remove anything from a photo, he goes over this new tool in depth and uh, it's pretty good. Uh, this is what we got so far. If we go back and reset the original photo, this was the photo out of camera, and this is after. More contrast, better white balance, got rid of these uh, these guys, and they were, uh, it was pretty funny. I was joking earlier that, um, you know, they were trying to dive down and get under the tree, and then um, Amber, come, Amber comes over here and, like, just disappears into the cave, and they're like, whoa, what's going on here? All right, so I would probably go through and remove a lot more of these dots. Might do that a little bit later. It's all wrong. Yeah, it's way faster that way. The way I used to have to do it with like clone stamps and healing brushes and cropping, um, it's a lot easier. But I don't know how it's done. It's magic. I'm pretty sure it's just magic. I like I'm looking over here because that's where your chat is. It's magic. Um, all right, so we're going to leave that. I'm just going to vignette it because I vignette almost everything because I'm a rookie. I like the way it looks. That much. Oh, look at the 40. Feathered a little bit. Boom. Before. Oh, where's our before? Before. After. Let's go like big screen here. Get my face out of here. You can actually hit your L button off the lights is it L no full screen L turn off the lights boom before
four. Lights back on so I can find the other picture. I'm sorry, that's before and that's Pretty good. I'll go back and like make it better, but I'm sure CJ's gonna enjoy it. Still doing it. <laughs> Check out that video. You'll never go back. I'm telling you that content aware fill is magic. I could like completely remove me from this photo, no problem. I'll explain it here a little bit more detail. So when you're in Photoshop, just a copy of this. You got your photo here. Um, like I did before, you know, just outline whatever it is that you want to get rid of. You want to be pretty, pretty precise, pretty tight. And then when you go up here and you hit edit content aware fill, if I zoom out, you can see it makes this green box. And that green box is what Photoshop is going to sample from. So it's going to use the data in that green box to try to figure out what they should fill that selection with so that it looks, uh, so that it replaces that subject. Over on this side, you have your preview window and you can zoom into where I was and you can see that it already did a pretty good job. But say that it like, for whatever reason, and this happens sometimes, that it would just take like that log right there and just put it, it would sample from the log. You can come up here and use this little sample brush tool and you can, by hitting the minus key, you can remove the trees so that it will not pull from the trees. It will not use the tree to make that sample selection. It won't use these rocks over here that are a little too bright for the sample. There you have it. And then you can see over here that it even like, it even continued the light ray through. Like it knew that there should be a light ray somehow. Magic, what I say? Hit OK and boom, you can see before, after. You can maybe see like a little like haziness, fuzziness, but you could go back in and like tighten that up, sharpen it up. Um, but we're gonna leave the diver in because that's what CJ would want. It says his logo on there. But anyway. Cool photo. Um, I might even crop this um, a little bit. Do something like I don't know if I want to always go two thirds. I don't. Yeah, I think it needs to be centered. Be over just just a little. There we go. That's pretty. Yeah. I don't know. Might just be good like that. I think the framing on it is pretty good. Doesn't need to rotate. I think we're gonna go with that. All right, so um, kept it under an hour. I thought I went over. But uh, guys, thank you so much for stopping by and uh, joining us. We didn't edit as many photos as we usually did. We did, what, three? They do like at least four or five. I told a lot of stories. But guys, thanks so much for supporting the channel, stopping by. Um, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're looking at it right now. Um, it helps out the channel. It helps with the growth of the channel. And it also helps get more exposure. Also, you'll get notifications if you ring that bell for the next time that I start this. Um, and yeah, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next Thursday. Same time, same place. Great, brother. Appreciate it, Stuart. And I'm psyched for you that you're getting into free diving. It, you're doing it the smart route, doing your FII course. Um, let me know if you ever had any questions, uh, and we'll need to dive together when you're when you're ready to roll. All right, see you guys. Thanks so much.